Will Gentil here for Bandia de Puertas. Here in St. James, Trinidad. Right at the corner of Dengue Street. Right across from Smokey and Bunties, the famous Smokey and Bunties. Which is now pretty smoky because it shut down. And that was an amazing place. And all kind of famous Calypsonians and sports people from all over the world would come and lime at this place. When we were there, a fella named Anselm Murray, Murray, came up carrying a really expensive Stratocaster, Stratocaster guitar. We limed with him for a while. Jeff from the Natahe, if you like. Was playing the air guitar for a while. And some Mary played with Chucker Khan, uh, Howlin', Howlin' Wolf, all kind of people. Anyway, it's we're here in Trinidad. I'm uh, trying to get things sorted out myself. On top of the recent crowd of short-term short memory loss, I'm just having a, oh, sorry, I have to tell you, I don't have a, I, I can't really see what I'm filming because I don't have a, uh, I don't have a, a front view, a front, uh, how do you say, it, the screen, so I can't see what I'm actually focusing on, so I hope so that accounts for the roughness of this. This is a rough cut. Everything is a rough cut for me. So, uh, trying to get visa problems sorted out. Uh, right now, this week is happening the Boca Lit Fest. Uh, open tonight to go. Last year, I read at a place called Big Big Black Box. Read a uh, read an elegy for Herman Wallace, uh, uh, Angola Three prisoner, solitary confinement, 43 years in solitary confinement. He passed away, and I wrote. About him, especially since he was a Black Panther, uh, we have some pretty famous Black Panthers from, from come from Woodbrook and Trinidad and Tobago, not far, not far from here at all. Uh, and uh, so I'm hoping to go read there again tonight and see what see what happens. I just wanted to make sure you saw the, this, see this sign here, it's, uh, see if I can catch it, uh, over at Smokey and Bunty's there, it's a man's world, it says. Uh, so anyway, uh, at the Boca Lit Fest uh, that I was talking about, there's a lot of participation this year with uh, Spanish films and Spanish language uh, uh, texts. Uh, almost half of what I saw on the schedule of, of the readings was that, so reflecting that, uh, well, Venezuela, the country I can presently not get back to until I get my visa renewed somehow, uh, is only about eight miles away from the closest point of Trinidad, where we are. <laughs> So it goes to show how cultures and uh, countries can be so close and yet so far away, uh, which can be a good thing and a bad thing, I suppose. But anyway, um, like for instance, they had the Florentino y el Diablo uh, film, uh, which I was really surprised to see because I've, I've not seen that really anywhere outside of Venezuela, reference to this fantastic uh, uh, poem, epic poem, uh, in, uh, in the con contrapunteo form, or the uh, extempo form, uh, uh, outside of Venezuela. It's, uh, it's like about, I don't know, 45 minutes long, this poem. Uh, there's, there's a couple of versions of it on the internet, uh, 
there's a Venezuelan version, which is more reflective of Venezuelan music and style of music, and there's uh, also Uruguayan um, version, uh, where they are singing and reciting the lines. Uh, and uh, actually, I prefer the Uruguayan version uh, to my foreign ear, I suppose, untrained ear. Uh, but both versions are, are very good. Venezuelan version, Venezuelan version, you really get an idea good idea how the people speak there and, and how and how and also the actually the rhythm section in the Venezuelan version of music is is a little bit better I think. But it's fast and the Uruguayan version is slow. So I'm trying to decide uh, what I'll read tonight. Um, I was thinking of reading Rosinante uh, in English and in Spanish and uh, doing something like that and also maybe uh, seeing if I can uh, record, uh, play a recording I have of a fisherman friend I have who sings uh, uh, a version of, kind of a version of an accidental uh, called Galeron, uh, a fisherman friend, uh, poet friend I have in called Julian, his name is Julian Hernandez uh, from Los Rocas. So I was hoping, I'm thinking maybe uh, if I can possibly play that. I uh, have a little recorder, maybe I can put up the microphone and give people a taste of real Venezuela tonight. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, later. And we just come down from St. James, uh, where we were having a lime all by ourselves, right there on the corner of Dengue Street. Talking about uh, how Smokey and Bunty burned down, and liming with Ansel Murray and Nanat Nanate. And we come down to downtown Port of Spain and City Gate to meet up with Trinidad author Arlene Walrun. There she is. <laughs> yes, we find a car. Now we have. She's she's very difficult person. <laughs> now we have to convince her to go walk in a little bit and then go back up to see if we can catch up with that uh, big box, big black box thing we were talking about earlier. All right. So Arlene wants to show me the cannons uh, downtown, right by City Gate. These were the cannons that defended Port of Spain back in the old days. You know, all this was, this is really low land here. This is all sort of reclaimed land. And actually, you see, actually, when I turn the camera, you'll see the cannons and you'll see a kind of a moat. I guess those were the cannons. They were aimed at the English, the Spanish, the French, Spanish. the Spanish, when they tried to uh, Spanish the first Spanish. And there's a Say again? The first Spanish fort in Trinidad. Fort. Yeah. These were Spanish cannons? Yes, at Fort Andres. All right. Defend San Andres, yeah. San Andres. Defending, fighting the English. Whoever came. Fighting whoever came. Uh -huh. Right. But nobody's speaking Spanish now, so the Spanish lost. All right. And this was a lighthouse. So we're in downtown Port of Spain. We rented a room. We're getting ready to go to the to the big black box now. Hopefully we're trying to get it together. I don't have all my my texts. I don't have the text in Spanish. The lady downstairs won't make a copy for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, one of those days.
a lot of uh, Spanish contributions this year. And I was going to read something in Spanish, but uh, it's up in the cloud. And I can't get it to come down from the cloud because I don't, uh, I, I don't have the computer with me where it is up in the cloud. And because of my technical deficiencies, I can't get it to come back down from the cloud. Um, so I'm going to do something else. Uh, it has to do with a bit of difficulties I'm having, a little bit of difficulties I'm having right now, getting back to Venezuela, getting, uh, getting a visa renewal. Uh, Granby Street. She walks away a sway, leaving a smoking trail of tropical spice in her sachet. Two bottles down, across from the bottle house. In sight, the church steeple, a clock hour stuck at ten minutes to four, the hour that Hurricane Ivan struck and snapped off one whole spire. Never far from being reminded of original sins here, nor our storm-swept, agonized aspirations. The Venezuelan ambassador in Grenada, black as my sweet Trini wifey, a black Pablo Neftali rays, wearing his light blue guayabera, with a poet's droll demeanor, has apologetically explained to me, the gypsy mutt poet with gringo passport that just wandered in, that orders from up high meant that on only residents or nationals might he bestow the almighty stamp of my renewal. So I, mutt poe, to be washed ashore again by the waves of, of a blind bureaucracy. Or, of course, I could pretend to be the millionaire on the shores where socialism doesn't matter anymore. Out of luck for now, out to survive the night, because we've learned the next dawn always comes. And our, my God, is an animist kind of God that only obeys the sun, the moon, and a silent night's silent prayers. Manana, we'll, we will point our bow, bow and arrow at the sky and bring down Trinidad at the horizon line, where the so-called current and wind addled dragon's mouth still awaits us. Good enough. Thank you. I give it up for Will. Okay, so it's 2.34 in the morning here. Sitting here on the balcony of the Melbourne Inn in downtown Port of Spain. Uh, back from the big black box a couple hours ago. You see on the you see on the Digidata sign over there it's 27 degrees. I don't know if you can see it that far. 27 degrees, 235 in the middle. So I didn't get to read everything I wanted to read. Uh, but anyway, I had an interesting time. I wasn't able to get the copy of the Spanish. Uh, version in time of uh, the text that I wanted to read in Spanish and in English, so I just ended up reading uh, a text I recently wrote uh, on Sailor's Memory. Uh, which you can find on the site. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to say that uh, it's just amazing the talent that uh, they had there. They had many different people. It's even nervous because people were so talented. The caliber of reading, and, uh, 
the uh, the content of the text was so high. Uh, So I was just really impressed and on top of that everything was pretty much uh, sort of uh, rap so or rap or hip hop or sort of a lot of the people are spoken word with a lot of uh, sort of rapping and kind of thing going on music and uh, a high high premium on performance as opposed to uh, just reading I'm not much of a performer especially when I'm reading my own things or anything and uh, I just like to let I let, like to let the color and the content and the whatever's in there, the depth that's in there come out through through the dynamic of the arrangement of the words so the problem is I sound in my own head I sound like a completely different person I am sort of Nina Simone in my own head, and but outside of my head, I am definitely not Nina Simone. Uh, so, and I uh, haven't yet figured out how to get the front camera to work on this camera. I'm using uh, Marlene's camera because, on top of everything else, of course, right in the middle of the performance, I ran out of memory ran out of, basically ran out of memory. All four of my memory chips were full. So, uh, luckily she was able to capture some of my, some of my reading on there. Uh, not performance, reading. And, uh, so, this is a really nice quiet deck, I have to admit. Uh, I smoke a cigarette on at this hour in the evening. If there's enough light you can capture that. It's probably all looks a little foggy or whatever. Anyway, so tomorrow we're going to continue. Hopefully, we're going to hopefully go back up to Shagaramas, uh, edit some of this uh, vlogging we're doing here, which we have no idea what we're doing, but we're just going forward with it and uh, come down. Uh, later in the day and go to a place called the breakfast breakfast shed which has no kind of breakfast that I'm used to but it's called the breakfast shed wonderful place also an iconic place in Trinidad as like uh, Smokey and Bhakti's and St. James and, and the corner of Dengue Street and all that a uh, very I iconic uh, place so apparently they're having uh, uh, readings there in which I might be able to jump in and try to do something. I'm going to try to get some of those texts uh, that I wasn't able to get today to. But um, the people there gave me a, a really nice reception that remembered me from last year. I gave a little preamble about uh, the Angola 3 and how Albert Woodfox, uh, the last remaining incarcerated member in solitary confinement was released only a couple of months ago or a month, a month ago after 43 years in solitary confinement uh, and an abomination and uh, they appreciated that especially since uh, the, those three uh, Robert King, uh, Herman Wallace and Albert Woodcox uh, were all Black Panther Party members and uh, one of the main uh, uh, energies behind the Black Panther movement was born here and not far actually from where I read uh, uh, in Woodbrook there, uh, Stokely Carmichael. So some people in the audience appreciated that and appreciated me uh, giving them that update. Uh, since believe it or not, although people are very aware here, uh, I have to say for all the wonderful uh, positives that Trinidad has, uh, they, are, they are really inundated and fed uh, with more of a mass media. The consumption is very much mass media uh, consumption and they don't, they don't get a lot of news like that. Um, they get it through their own networks, through their own channels. Uh, 
which actually in some aspects is what uh, fuels the, or has fueled in a way the, the Calypsonian movement and the Kaiso music because these are ways in which people can bypass the mass media and um, tell the real story, tell, let, let the feeling on the street, uh, let's say, or in the community and get out unfiltered and uncensored by uh, uh, the powers on top and the powers that be that might have other motives, other motives for and other um, uh, filters, heavier filters. To apply to it. Um, yeah, so anyway, it's early, late. Um, and that's that. Just wanted to finish off the day and see where this goes. So, so see you later. See you tomorrow. Okay. Ciao, ciao.